Hello everyone. So now we start with the chapter of federalism in India. Now, before we move to understand what federalism in India means, it is very important for us to know what federalism actually is, right? So when we talk about federalism, federalism is actually one type of power sharing, right? We have already done this chapter earlier. So this becomes federalism is one type of power sharing. Now what we had learned in power sharing is that power is never concentrated in the hands of one, rather it should be shared, right? This is what power sharing was. We also learned that power sharing usually has two types. There are two types of power sharing. What are the two types of power sharing? One is horizontal, though my line might not look very horizontal. And the other is your vertical power sharing, right? So when we talk about horizontal power sharing, then horizontal power sharing is usually what happens within the various government bodies, right? So if we talk about the legislature or the executive or the judiciary, so they all have their, you know, same type, different powers, but they are at the same level. No one is higher or lower than the other. Okay, so that is the reason we place them at the same scale, at a horizontal level. Now, when we talk to vertical power sharing, we talk about this. That means you have the union government, the state government, the local government. So, this becomes your vertical power sharing. Okay, now when we talk about federalism, this is actually what we are going to study about. So, we can easily write that when we talk about vertical power sharing is actually your federalism about which we will move to study, right? So, when we talk about federalism, one thing that we already know, it is better to revise what we already know, is that there is a union level of government, there is a state level of government, and in a country like India, we also have a local set of government. Okay, now, let's come to the facts now, all right? So, when we talk about federalism, there are a few points that you should never miss out while writing a civics an uh, answer or while understanding a concept of civics. Okay, so first and foremost, just start. Federalism is a system of government. You know? So this government setup has been broken down into three parts. You have the legislature, you have the union, state and the local, in which the powers have been divided between the center and its constituent constituent parts. Okay, so you have the union government and its constituent parts. In India, if we talk about it, will be the union, the state, as well as the local bodies. Whether you have the city bodies or whether you have the village bodies. Okay. Now, next point. It is an institutional mechanism to accommodate two sets of politics. One at the center or the national level and the second at the regional level. Now, here we need to understand something. Now, when we talk about a country like India, okay, there are various issues that happen at the national level. There are various issues that can be tackled better at the local level or you can say state level or further down the local level. Now, if I talk about topics like war or defense, or finance. So these are few issues that probably will affect everyone, right? Everyone in every part of the country will be affected if there is a war with any other country. So let us leave all these duties with the state, your central government. Whereas if you look at the local affairs, okay, now if I talk about what is happening in a small city or what is happening, an issue faced in a small village, it is very logical that the union government at the center will not be able to focus or solve the issue quickly if we leave it everything on them. So that is the reason what we have done is we have divided the powers into the among the union government, central government, union government, state government and the local government. So if there is an issue in a village, they can be tackled by the local government easily rather than wait for the central government to respond. Correct? Now, 
it makes an important part of indian polity syllabus of ias examination also so those who feel that um, when we talk about civics or these chapters especially when you talk about federalism power sharing constitution all these things not only they are very important for those who are preparing for the upsc level it is also very important for those preparing for ntsc examination okay those who are preparing for ntsc examinations every year questions will definitely come from federalism or concepts related to federalism so don't give that a miss okay now we we'll talk about indian federal systems now when we talk about federations okay so when we usually talk about federations federations are basically two types of federations what are the two types of federation okay first of all let us understand when we talk about federation and when we talk about a unitary system okay a federal system and a unitary system are very very different okay so when we talk about union form of government or unitary form of government in a unitary form of government what happens if this is your union union or the center so they have all the power concentrated in their hands when we talk about federation this is just the reverse because federation is also an example of power sharing that we have already talked about now naturally whenever we talk about a unit unitary form of government there is always the chance if you concentrate powers if you you know uh, you must have heard the saying that power corrupts isn't it so if you place all the power in the hands of one body there is always a chance that there will be a lot of corruption however and it might also affect the efficiency of the country on the other hand if we break down the powers and give them everybody what they are skilled at every level gets the power what they can actually execute properly i think so that will lead to the you know uh, efficiency of the country overall now when we talk about federation now this is one question that has been asked several number of times in your examination and this is a very very important topic that no one should be missing out on now when we talk about federation so federation is usually two types of federation okay now one is holding together federation and one is coming together federation okay now just look at my hand gestures okay my hand holding together and coming together okay. now when i talk about holding together just remember this you have this is the center of the federation these are the various provinces or the states okay now center is trying to hold everyone together that means maximum power still lies in the hand of the center so the power or the spread of power happens in this way okay why has this kind of federation been made very simple now think about india now this is the example this is the kind of federation that india has okay Now think about India. Now India has uh, what you say is huge diversity. Okay. Now to accommodate, if you have to keep everyone bound together in one nation, it is very important to give one body certain extra power, isn't it? So this is the work that is done by the center in India. So that is the reason. If you see, if you compare the uh power sharing model in india you will see the union has more power as compared to the center okay so this is what you call is holding together why because the center is holding together all the parts of the country okay now after that we come to the coming together federation now what happens in a coming together federation it is just the ulta of this so you have this body okay these are the provinces or the states now what they do is they all come together okay to form a larger unit now here what happens 
this part that is the center as well as the provinces they have equal powers and they there is a sort of an autonomy okay unlike what is there in holding together federation so when you see uh, the condition of uh, the type of uh, federation that is practiced in usa it is the coming together federation why because probably the provinces they felt that instead of you know living separately if we come together and combine into one nation probably we can rise as a better power or as a more powerful nation so that is the reason that they have come together so it is nothing uh, that they need to accommodate diversity so it is not nothing like that it is it ha they have made the decision and following that decision that they have come together now there is a huge difference between these two form of federations that you need to understand okay now when we talk about this i have already said that india is also a federation okay now when we talk about federation in india okay so let's first of all see what are the features that are there in india um, on the basis of which we can say that india is a federation okay first of all we know that a very important feature of federation is that the government should be at least in two levels right in india we have that we have the central level we have the state level we also have the local level correct so government we at least have in two levels now, next is distribution of power between different levels that also we have because as i have said the center has specific powers for example they look after the defense the state has separate powers they probably look after agriculture the local they have different powers so every you know levels of federation they have different powers okay next another feature of federation that india has is rigidity now why is a rigid constitution a must for federation why this is because you know you have to maintain this division of power right now those at the center if you give them the liberty that you can come and just change the constitution as and when and just like the way that you want to what will happen after some time is that they will mold the constitution in such a way by which they gather more and more power right leaving the other two levels with almost no power okay so naturally if you have to maintain this federal structure if you have to maintain this division of power it is very important that the constitution becomes rigid now when i mean that the constitution is rigid i mean that no there are few clauses of the constitution which the central government cannot change by its own you may need a majority or a special majority vote when i talk about a special majority vote i mean you need the voting of the state legislative assemblies also okay so you being the central government though you are a holding together federation yet you cannot change the constitution as per your will and whim okay now is next thing that we say is dual citizenship okay now this is one feature that is very important in a federation however this is an exception because in india we do not have dual citizenship okay why we do not have what do we mean by dual citizenship dual citizenship means that you are not only a member or a citizen of india you are also a citizen of probably bengal or bihar or maharashtra kerala from wherever or haryana we don't have that so we don't issue separate um, what you say is citizenship for different countries right or different states it is only the citizenship of your country that you have in india correct okay okay now let's move to the next part that is bicameralism so when we talk about so don't get confused with this uh, uh, comparatively difficult word it's a very simple concept bicameralism means having two houses so usually in federations we have two houses in the parliament so just as we have lok sabha and rajya sabha in india 
okay so this is what we talk about so this is one thing that india has and not only does the union have it but even if you see the various states most of the states have two houses in the um uh, in the parliament so all federations now these are usually the main features if you say these are few of the main features of a federation okay uh now it might be that there are few of these features that there are present in few federations there are other features that might not be there in a number of federations now when we talk about federalism in india so let's concentrate on that now definitely as i have already discussed it before remember we are a holding together federation and whenever we talk about it being a holding together federation in a holding together federation always the center has comparatively more power okay so what you need to understand is when we talk about federation in india we are federal but we have a lot many features which are mostly tilted towards a unitary form of government why because the center has more power as compared to the state so that is the reason we often say that india is nothing but a quasi federal system means semi federal system okay because it has if you look at the features of indian federation you will see that there are features of federation as well as unitary government present now if you look at let's look at what indian constitution has to say now article 1 let's go to article 1 of indian constitution it says that india that is bharat shall be a union of states okay now nowhere in the constitution is it mentioned that india is a federation we say it to be a union of states okay so that means what you need to emphasize is the word union okay and do we have the policies in place which are policies supporting federalism but actually uh, nowhere in the constitution is it mentioned that india is a federation all right now when we talk about this history of indian constitution or indian parliamentary setup we trace it back to an act of 1919 okay so this was the first time that basically the power was divided between the center and the provincial legislative assemblies so this was under the british time but however this policy or this division of power has always made you know presence in india throughout okay now let us first of all focus on few features of india which we can say is definitely federal feature okay now first of all remember when we talked about the features of federation we said in a federation you have to have not only the union level but also the state level very good so this is what we have in india right we have the union level that is a state level union union level state level as well as we have the third tier of the government also that is the local level right okay we also said that if we are one of the main features of a federation is that every level of the government will have their own powers hai na so you will have the union will have their own set of powers the state will have their own set of powers and the local bodies will have their own set of powers now this has to be clearly mentioned in the constitution okay now because why i am saying that in a federation constitution is very important because it is the constitution that protects what power will remain with which stage of the government right now it is in the 7th schedule if you can please remember those these things i said article 1 7th schedule please remember all of these things especially for those people who are preparing for your ntsc examination now when we talk about the 7th schedule what they have done is to avoid any con- kind of confusion or quarrel between the different state levels etc what we have done is we have separated the powers between the union state and we have another list called the concurrent list now in the union list you have all the matters on which the central government can act okay 
in the state list you have all the materials on which or all the subjects on which the state government can concurrent list has those subjects or subjects on which both the center plus the state can make laws all right now i will come to the details of each slowly 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 now this is clear that when we talk about union list so for the union list the materials that are or the subjects that are mentioned in the union list the union can make laws the state list has subjects on which the state government can make laws the concurrent list has those subjects on which both the union plus the state can make laws but remember that india is more unitary than federal now think about a subject called a a a this is a subject that is in the concurrent list okay and what happens is both the union government as well as the state government make laws on the a a a subject that is noted under the concurrent list so up to confusion because both have made laws on this subject so what will happen is basically if both union and state make laws on the same subject written under the concurrent list it is the decision of the union government that will always prevail okay it will not take into consideration what the state has to say it is the decision of the union government that will ultimately prevail so here we again get a proof that india is more unitary than federal or we can say that india has a quasi federal state correct is this clear everyone i think so itna to clear ho gaya hai sab ka now let's move on to the next thing now in india one thing you know we have said that in in a federation constitution is very important right now when we talk about constitution yes india has what we can say is the supremacy of the constitution right in india the constitution is supreme okay now why is it supreme we can say that indian constitution is supreme because everything we know that the indian constitution is the lengthiest constitution in the world because everything has been written down so you there is no scope of any uh, confusion ke ye hona chahiye ya ye hona chahiye that is not there because everything has been noted down everything works as per what is written in the constitution okay so it is a supreme law of the land so one tick because in a federation also you need a constitution that is rigid next thing is in india you have an independent judiciary okay now when i talk about an independent judiciary that means um, you know it can take decisions freely and fairly right now when i talk about federation union state local there might be often there are chances that there might be issues happening between the union and the state or state versus state things happen so to keep the integrity of federalism in place you need a judicial structure that will help you to keep these things in place okay so yes india has an independent jurisdiction next is the lower and district courts are also there okay so in this also you have this federation even in the judicial system you have this federation however as i have told you already there are various features of the indian constitution that you will see is more unitary rather than federal now i have said okay in india uh, your constitution is the supreme law of the land completely i agree to that very good it is the supreme law of the land but you also have to understand that all the features or all the terms that are written in the constitution they are not uh, difficult to change there are few that require special majority but there are certain uh, provisions in the constitution that can be easily changed now if i have certain provisions that can be easily changed i can clearly say that the indian union can you know keep more power with themselves so in this way definitely we can say that chalo bhai this feature does not fit into a proper federal structure it is more unitary so that is the reason we also say that indian constitution is actually 
partly rigid, partly flexible. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about center ke paas kya kya power. Okay. We have already talked about matters of defense. Okay. And I have also, I think so, I have already covered this point that both the center as well as the state, they can make laws on the matters written in the concurrent list. However, if state and the center, uh, center and the state both make laws on the same concurrent subject, it is the decision of the center that will ultimately prevail. This also means that the state, as compared to the state, the center has more power. Okay. Now, not only this, there is also a, a thing in the constitution that if the union government wants, the union government can also make laws as prescribed in the in certain materials or matters written in the state list. Okay, in certain limited extent, it can do. That means this clear demarcation of union list, state list, and concurrent list, though it is there, even though even then the union has more power than the state government, right? Now, usually what happens? If you look at the Rajya Sabha, okay, now Rajya Sabha may aisa nahi hai ki all states, okay, now usually what happens in a federation, I'll tell you, is in a federation, now this is one unit, this is one province, this is another province, this is another province. Usually in the Rajya Sabha or in the upper house, you have equal representation for every state. Okay. So that means if this state is sending 10 members, this state will also send 10 members, this state will also send 10 members, this state will also send 10 members. However, if you look at the constitution of India or the Rajya Sabha in India, you will see that states send their members as per the population of their state. So, whereas Goa, you know, Uttar Pradesh sends 31 members, Goa sends only one member. So, here basically we are not um, accepting federalism in totality. All right? All right. Now, again, in a federation, what happens is, Here, when we talk about a federation, there is clear separation of powers. That is, executive will do executive's jobs, legislature will do the legislature's job, judiciary will do the judicial's, judiciary's work. However, in India, this is not the same. Why I am saying this? Because here, the executive is a part of the legislature. Okay. Yes, so this is completely against the division of powers that happens okay so if your executive is a part of the legislature that means the executive is answerable to the legislature so we are not practicing uh, strict separation of powers if we are not uh, practicing strict separation of powers we can also say we are not uh, practicing strict federalism too Okay, now when we talk about a federal relation, federal, federalist uh, thick, uh, structure or federalism in a federalism, the lower house and the Rajya Sabha or the lower house and the upper house. Okay, so usually they have equal powers. This is not the scene in India. All of you know that as compared to the Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha has lesser powers. The Lok Sabha is a much more powerful house as compared to the Rajya Sabha. Now, Next, we have another very important thing that is the emergency powers. If there is an emergency situation in the control in place, then the entire power shifts in the hands of the union. So, everything can be taken away at that time. Okay. So, this is another feature that is completely against the policies of your uh, federalistic principles. Correct? Okay. Okay. So let's uh, move ahead. Uh, next is another thing why we can say that it is not an uh, not a perfect federation is also because we know that definitely we have a independent judiciary that is perfect that is what we need. But India mostly has an integrated judiciary. 
okay so there is uh, you know at the top you have the supreme court below the supreme court you have the high court then you have the district courts etc it's just straight state state courts and then district courts etc so this is one integrated feature hai na so there is no separate court for the union separate court for the state separate court for the district they are all joined together so this is another feature that is completely against you know not against you can say that it is not a true feature of federalism next is another thing that we have already discussed before is when we talk about federalism one thing that comes to our mind is in a federation hamesha you should have uh, dual citizenship that means if you are a citizen of california you are also a citizen of us it means you are the citizen of the country as well as the state that you belong to however in india we don't have anything like that we have single citizenship so uh, so if i am a citizen of india i am i am a citizen i am a citizen of india but i am not the citizen i won't if i go abroad i won't be saying that i am a citizen of madhya pradesh no okay now the you this is what is very important that you need to understand so these are few features of why we say usually that india is not a true federation in real sense of term okay so it is not a real federation in uh, reality now also when we talk about not only that i have already told you first of all keep in mind that india is a holding together federation that means the union is going to have more power now let's talk about the governor's appointment now when we talk about the governor okay now governor is actually we can say that he is he should be the head of the state right but in india the governor is basically a center's representative in the state so that means here again power sharing is not strict because if i send someone who is a representative of the union to the center that means the bridge between the union and the center is not being maintained okay next is uh, the union government that is the parliament it has the power to alter the territories of your country so that is the reason uh, all of you know that there are number of new states that have been created in the history of india whether you call jharkhand uttaranchal uh, telangana so these states have been carved out from the already existing states now this is also a responsibility or this is the power of the union government so it can even change the name of a state hai na uttaranchal uttaranchal becomes uttarakhand so in that's the way also when we talk about your all india services so you have the is officers irs officers ips officer so uh, they are the central officers okay but they work in the states so basically again the demarcation of power between the state and the center is blurred okay now even when we talk about the election mechanism that happens so election commission is responsible for conducting elections everywhere whether it is a center or whether it is a state we don't have separate election commissions for state and center okay now the governor of the of a state can reserve certain kinds of bills for the president's consideration now again now if a decision is being taken at the state level why should it be preserved for the decision of the president right so again not a true federation so he can even reject the bill if he wants so again an example of holding on to federation okay now let's not go into the details about audit mechanism and ye um, just remember till now whatever we have discussed is enough if a question comes uh, like why do you think india is a quasi federal state so you just mention the you know the uh, you give examples where india is a true federation as well as you write the examples where it is more unitary so you have to give both the examples to actually answer the question that yes it is a quasi federal state now when we talk about federal federalism now another question that comes up now just think about this india is a huge country right it is a huge 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 country it has huge diversity um tremendous expanse now the question comes is ki yahan pe how do we actually practice 
this federalism. Now, one thing that you need for this is constitution. The constitution needs to be very, very powerful because whatever is written in the constitution, that will be followed by everyone. Okay. Now, uh, that is the reason India has, you know, everything stated down within its constitution. Okay. Now, it is not only definitely we can say that, uh, you know, Hello, constitution mein likha hua hai, whatever has been lik, um, jo likha hua hai, that is what we have followed and so the federation of india is a huge success that is also not true along with the constitution okay it is how successful your federation is it also depends on the politics of the country okay the democratic politics of the country how is democracy being practiced in your country okay now, when we talk about, let's talk about, understand federalism. Why did we introduce federalism? We introduced federalism because we have to accommodate the huge diversity that India has, right? That is one of the basic sense of holding on, matlab, your, uh, holding on uh, federation. You have to see that all diversity is being preserved, okay? So, if you have to conserve diversity, if you have to respect diversity, that means your political setup, the way your policies are working, that also needs a lot of, you know, um, attention. So, how did we achieve this? First and foremost, we know, I think so all of you know about this, that India practices this feature of having a lot of linguistic states, right? India has a number of linguistic states. Now, you, when I talk about states being formed on the basis of language, okay, so it might seem that, bhai, this is something against democracy because we are trying to break the population into various groups, Hindi, Bolne wale log, Tamil, Bolne wale log, etc., etc. Now, on the basis of language, Various states in the past have been created, uh, territories have been changed, and this has happened. But now the fact is, okay, why did we take language to be such an important aspect for creation of state? Okay, now not only language, but there are also several states, uh, such as if you take the example of Nagaland or Uttarakhand or Jharkhand. Now these states. They have this unique, uh, you know, culture, ethnicity. Now, if you look at all these states like Nagaland, Uttarakhand, or Jharkhand, they have a lot of tribal population. You have to give them prominence as well. Now, in a federalism or in a democracy, it is very important to recognize the diversity that your country has. If you have to recognize the diversity of your uh, country it is also very it is also important that you value that and you execute that and this is the reason that we have created states on the basis of uh, language we have created states on the basis of ethnicity and culture okay now uh When this demand for states arose, okay, when this demand for various states, they came up okay, on the basis of language, then the, uh, you know, central government was really very, uh, you know, they were in a position of shock because they did not know how to react because they basically thought that if we create one state on the basis of language, it's going to create a rift in India, okay. But it has proved otherwise. Why I am saying so? The scene that has so happened is that India has now become more united. Okay, now it has become easier to administer this country better. Now, why has this happened? Now, just look at, you know, states like uh, Bengal, where you have maximum population of Bengali speaking people. Now, if you have to administer this state better, yeah, now, a leader who speaks Bengali can come up, he can uh, speak in the language of the people, he can make people realize. Now, you also have to understand, when I talk about the population of a country, it is not that everyone can speak English, okay, it is not that everyone can speak Hindi, 
there are many people who are still uh, dependent on the vernacular language or problem what we can say is the mother tongue now if you are able to make people aware of the various government policies if you are able to make people aware of their rights and duties in vernacular language in their mother tongue don't you think it is going to be easier for the country to govern itself e easily and, and moreover i also believe that chalo if this is one state where probably tamil speaking population they are in majority okay very good so this is a tamil speaking state this is a telugu speaking state this is a hindi speaking this state this is a kannada speaking state so you have this now what happens people within that state they first of all they find this unity amongst themselves ke bhai we have a culture they are proud of their own individual culture also when they look at other states and they see that bhai the other languages are also part of this great uh, you know union of india so that also instills a fear of pride amongst them so they are proud of their own culture as well as there is a respect for the other culture okay now let's talk to uh, let's talk about another very important aspect of india now this is our language point Now, usually, what happens is when we talk about language, you will see that most countries they have a national language. Okay. However, in India, we don't have any national language. So, those who still feel that Hindi is a national language, it is wrong. Hindi is not a national language. Okay. This is because why did we not choose Hindi as a national language? If we would have chosen Hindi to be a national language. it would have been a majoritarian form of government don't you think this is the same for, uh, problem that we had in sri lanka as well where sinhalese language was made the official language of sri lanka and naturally that places the other diverse groups at a secondary position this is wrong okay in india if you have 40% people who are speaking hindi that means the rest of the 60 persons population is speaking other languages hai na so how can i just give one language a place of prominence as the national language you know so instead of that instead of declaring any one single language to be the national language of a country what we have done is along with hindi we have taken another 21 languages that means 21 plus 20 uh, plus hindi that makes a 22 languages they have been declared as a scheduled language by our constitution okay these are the scheduled languages so when we talk about the scheduled languages now these are the languages that you know those that are accepted and recognized by our constitution right okay these are the languages that are accepted and recognized by our constitution that means if you are going for any government examination this is the reason i have added this picture now if you go to any government examination any examination uh, so you will see questions are asked in your english language as well as it is also asked in one of the regional language okay so if you are uh, from a bengali speaking state so there will be english followed by the same question that is asked in bengali as well why is this done so that you give equal weightage to all the languages you know so you give equal weightage to all the languages you treat all languages to be equal okay now every state can have their own official languages as well okay so just keep in mind whenever we are talking about the language policy of india keep in mind the situation in sri lanka it will help you to compare hai na also keep in mind see every chapter that you study in civics is somehow related to one another now when you have, you have already studied sri lanka you have already studied about uh, belgium now just take up the example of belgium when i talk about belgium you have seen that in belgium what they had done is that they had given um, you know recognition to their diverse population that is the reason there was no civil war they recognized ke bhai hum logo ke yahan pe french bolne wale log hai german bolne wale log hai dutch bolne wale log hai so we have to give equal weightage to everyone that is the reason they had a separate form of government or a separate tier of government called the community government yeah. 
so in india also the reason we have not decided upon any um policies of our own money any language national pol uh, language of our own it's only because we don't want to become next Sri Lanka. okay all right now when we talk about the center and state relations it's also very important way uh how we are actually practicing federalism okay now usually what happened after indian government was formed okay now when india became independent it's very important and please listen to me very carefully when indian government or when india got its independence at that time we did not have many parties okay so uh you know for a very long time if you see there was one single party that is indian national congress they ruled in the center and they as well as in most of the states also it was indian national congress government only that was ruling so that means for a very long time if you have the same party at the center as well as the same party at the state that means the state government has nothing much to do means whatever the center is going to stay they are uh, say they are going to accept that right now problem happened when at the center there was some other party that came to power okay now for example if i say that uh, here you have in the center union you have congress and at the state you have let me say bjp now there is a problem because both the parties they have different agendas they have you know different priorities and uh, abhi tak center has been enjoying all powers so problem to hoi gai. okay now at that time initially what happened the center had a tremendous hold of power so basically even for any monetary support the states had to beg in front of the uh, union okay we need this much budget for to conduct these states so that basically placed the sense the state at a lower position however things changed you know when the things changed when dhire 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 many other political parties also started being formed okay now not only one political party was there or two political parties that were there in power but we had many many political parties that came to be formed now when many political parties came to be formed there was another problem that is none of the political parties actually got a majority in the government so what happened many political parties together came up and they formed a coalition government now let me explain this in a better manner now what happens is socho this is the union government so in the union government the government has been formed by a coalition of party a plus b plus c now there is one state state one where the government in power is basically party c okay now party c demands from the union that we need 100 crores for some development work okay. in the union you have a coalition government where c is also a party of that coalition now the prime minister is basically from party a now the prime minister will think oh my god if i don't give 100 crores to party c might be party c will withdraw itself from this coalition and then finally this coalition government will fail and basically a will have to give its chair kyunki bhai tumne jo government banaya hai you have formed it with the help of a b and c now if c leaves that means you are losing a number of seats in the parliament you cannot hold that government so you also have to leave that power so in the fear of it they will also accept what the state government is asking so this means what happened is now 
unlike 50 years back now the situation or the relations between the state and the center has improved hai na okay so this is what is given in your ncrt textbook so this is what used to happen earlier if you see all the state governments so this is the union government this is indira gandhi and his and her government so they are distributing powers to the various state government but this changed after the coalition government came into scene okay now this is what happens during a coalition government now look at this this is atal bihari bajpayee ji and his coalition government is formed by all these political parties okay and dekho he is tensed he is nervous he has formed a coalition government he is sweating so he is holding the bjp lotus in his hand but he is very nervous because all the throne that he is sitting on is basically made of bomb now this is tmc now if suddenly tmc becomes naraz or becomes angry with atal bihari bajpayee ji or with bjp so this one will burn so if this burns if one bomb blasts that means this entire gaddi of atal bihari bajpayee ji will also burn and that means he will also lose his seat of prime ministership okay so this is the problem of a coalition government but coalition government in a way is also a boon this is because if imagine tmc was ruling west bengal during that time so the center could not ignore the demand of west bengal because atal bihari bajpayee ji knows or bjp knows ki we have to support what trinamool is saying or listen to what trinamool is saying because if we don't listen to what trinamool is saying then might be she'll quit from the coalition if she quits quits from the coalition we lose power from the union okay so i hope so this is clear uh, i also discuss this because uh, these kind of questions or what you say is picture based questions they are often asked in your paper now however talking about linguistic diversity one we have already said that we don't have any uh, national language we have a uh, um schedule languages 22 schedule languages and we also have a set of other languages that are almost we have in our census that is conducted there are almost 1500 distinct distinct languages that are spoken in india okay so 22 are schedule languages out of that the rest of other than that all the languages are non schedule languages okay so if you look at india it is perhaps a very diverse country and every language people linguistic group they have the you know freedom to speak their language uh, foster their own culture so there is no problem on the basis of language or practicing your language or speaking your language now uh, after this if you look at the schedule languages of india so these are the schedule languages of india so you have assamese or ahomia okay you have bodo gujarati kannada konkani malayalam marathi odia sanskrit sindhi telugu uh, then you have your bengali uh, dogri hindi kashmiri maithili manipuri nepali punjabi santhali tamil and urdu so out of all these schedule languages if you see the maximum population that speaks um, out of all the schedule languages is for hindi right 41.03 percent people who speak hindi followed by that i think so you have bengali and after bengali you have marathi uh, so the three most spoken languages in india if no no not not marathi it is uh, telugu so if you have three most spoken languages uh, if you say it's hindi bengali and then you have telugu now let's move on to if you talk about decentralization in india it's very simple all of you know we have the union government we have the state government and we also have the local government now decentralization is really very important because as i've said think about a issue happening in a small village now for example a tap is not working in a small village do you think this problem should go to the union it should wait for the union's attention uh, and then they will send their resources get the problem solved in a small village in nagaland it is not 
it is better if you want to solve the problem quickly you get it handled by the local uh, people because they will know the issue better they will know the resources better they can understand the problem better you know so this was this main idea towards decentralization it was taken in the year of 1992 and uh, they amended the third tier of the democracy and made it more effective uh, so now when you have this panchayat or um, you know corporations so their elections have become compulsory regular elections are compulsory in these bodies also you have seats reserved for scheduled castes uh, scheduled tribes and backward classes obcs so and you have one third seats reserved for women and uh, so that women they also have a share in the election process they have a viewpoint they have their um, you know demands put forward and uh, so this is it all of you know about the panchayat how the panchayat works you know about the gram sabha in the gram sabha basically everyone all the members of the gram they are a member of the gram sabha they usually meet like uh, twice or thrice in a year okay and uh, the local government then it after that you have the gram panchayat over that over that you have the local government structure it goes matlab you have then the block level then you have the district level so basically even if you look at this structure of uh, the local self-government that also has a hierarchy of its own so at the head of the local body or at the village local body you have the zilla parishad okay is the head of the uh that is the uh, zilla parishad when we talk about the urban areas you have the municipalities in towns and in very big cities you have corporation municipal corporations okay and that is headed by the mayor okay and uh, i think so that is it for this chapter most of the questions that are usually asked are from these two uh, sections only so what you really need to do is ke whenever you are studying this chapter of federalism what i would suggest you to do is don't treat this chapter to be something very different from the earlier chapters that if you are what you have done so don't treat it to be a chapter that is different from power sharing don't treat it to be a chapter that is different from your uh, um, democracy so think of these chapters to be a part of your uh grade ninth try to understand it from the perspective of what you have studied in grade ninth as well so that is also going to help you people a lot because uh, in grade 9 you have studied democracy in great details right so you people have studied it in great details and use that knowledge all right uh, so we have almost com completed almost now we have completed this chapter and uh, those who have still not downloaded the app it is my suggestion to please go and download this app of an academy and uh, if you use my code that is sda 10 you will get almost 10 not almost flat 10 percent discount on all the subscriptions that you take you can see me right there so that is me and uh, my name is sushrita das if i have not introduced myself in the very beginning and uh, i am your SST educator. We have done my master's in history from VHU. And uh, talking about your Unacademy Plus subscription, please do take it because you will get the best mentors, you will get your study materials, uh, regular doubt solving sessions, and uh, quizzes are there, mock sessions are there, daily MCQs are there. So, definitely. And this Unacademy subscription ke jo price is a plus K, it is basically 18,000 for 15 months and uh, if you use my code that is sda10 sda10 so i'll write it for you again s e a 10 this is my code if you use this you get it for 6200 rupees so basically bahut acha khasa discount mil jata hai use it now people who want even better you know guidance so just a personal mentor chahiye live uh, doubt solving sessions chahiye report card chahiye if you want uh, the support of your parents also then go for the uh, other one that is the iconic subscription and this iconic subscription is thoda bohat expensive because this is for not expensive so it is 28000 for 12 months you get it for 25200 if you use this code so this also comes down 
to like 2000 something per month and that is also for all subjects so usually if you go for any tuitions also to kahin kahin pe to ek ek subject ka 2000 2000 le lete hain so you will save yourself your parents from that pressure and so uh, for me i would definitely say don't forget the classes don't forget to like the session subscribe to the session and um, like subscribe press the notification bell icon and uh, just follow an academy for your amazing preparation and just let's crack it all together bye bye